Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country, and today's video is for the perfect pouch from Fierce Kitten Studio. Not only in this video are we going to go through how to sew this pouch, but I also want to take the time to explain things I do when I have a pattern that I love on how I kind of make it more my own, different techniques I use to customize it for what I'm using it for, whether a gift, a craft show, or just something I need to use for myself. I want to share tips on different things we can do to make pouches a little bit more upscale and how to take a pattern and kind of hack it to make your own so you can get the most use out of any pattern you buy. For this one right here, I'm using vinyls from Jen's Fabrics. I'll have a link for the Facebook group and the website in my description. And I'll also have, of course, a link for the pattern in my description as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about how this bag looks, but the one we're doing today is going to be a little bit different. So for this one, I'm making, made it as a cross body strap, having the two connectors down low and the back is just plain. I didn't put anything on the back. On the inside, this is a bound bag and I just left it completely simple. So you can see it's a wide open bag and you get in there, but I, I didn't do anything to the lining on this bag I made here. The one we're gonna make today, I'm going to add a zipper pocket on the back and I'm also gonna add slip pockets inside using mesh. For this bag, I kept everything kind of simple and just went along the pattern. The designer of this pattern gives us a couple different ways to do it. She tells us we can make the pattern as she originally wrote it, and then she also gives us a way to make it production style, which is even quicker and simpler than this bag already is. It is one of my favorite patterns. I've sewed it so many times. I've actually even bought the templates for it because I love it so much. So let's get started talking about the pattern, talking about the materials I'm using, what I'm gonna be doing differently, and some things you can do differently if you have this pattern or pattern similar to this one. So for the version of the bag I'm making in today's tutorial, I'm using what's called a rapport. This is something that I had not been used to using. I didn't even know what it was. I kind of had to look it up and get the definition to kind of understand it better. This rapport comes from Jen's Fabrics. It is a vinyl. It is textured. And I just think it's so cute. And now that I kind of understand the purpose of them, I'm definitely going to be getting more. The definition of rapport in like the standard sen sense is just a relationship that's kind of beneficial, mutual, friendly. It has a connection with it. So once I realized that, it made sense what a rapport is in sewing. A rapport is simply you get the panel this feature right here and then you get the coordinating print in one piece in one item so that way I don't have to buy a full roll of vinyl I don't have to buy a huge panel it is a cost-effective way to be able to make a bag people do it with clothes as well but of course I'm not a clothes maker so it's more cost-effective for you to get it in a rapport so you can make unique things just like I did with this bag here's the panel and then here's the coordinating print. So it just makes for a really cute bag. So for this one, I will be using this vinyl. Like I said in my intro, I do have the templates for this pattern. You can get them from Fierce Kitten Studio. She makes them herself. They're very economically priced, especially for someone like me who makes this bag a lot. But since they're clear, it's easy for me to place that template right on the panel print to trace it out perfectly and to have it centered perfectly. So without a lot of effort, I can get it cut the way I want to. I will even keep these leftover pieces here to use for my zipper tabs or maybe even my D-ring connectors depending on which I want to do. So I won't waste any of this. I'll take this piece over. This will be my front and then I'll take this piece over and figure out what picture I want to have on my back and trace it out and cut that way too. It makes it a little bit easier. Since I'm using this vinyl and it's a, a firm thick vinyl, I don't have to use any stabilizer on this exterior at all. So I won't do anything. I'll just cut everything out and be done. For this pattern, like I said, I want to talk to you about hacks. If your print, you could even do it like this way, turn it this way and have it to be instead of the bag like this, you could have it this way. And then we could change the way we add the zipper gusset to it. Such a cool way to change up a pattern. Maybe I'll do a video on that since the designers gave me permission to do this video and maybe do one that way. 
So for this pattern, I'm going to cut out two pieces from this vinyl of my main. I'm also going to cut out two pieces for the, the lining as well. For my lining, I'm using a water resistant canvas, so no interfacing on this either. That will cut down my cutting time so much. It really help out. For the gusset piece, we have a top gusset piece. So this will be my piece C, the zipper gusset portion. So I'll have two of these for the exterior, two for the lining in the version I'm doing today. And then I want to have one bottom gusset for the exterior, one bottom gusset for the lining. I'm also going to cut out two D-rings and zipper tabs. I haven't cut those out yet. I don't have a template piece for that. So I'm just going to kind of figure it out as I go as to how I want to do it. For this bag, I'm going to be making it into a crossbody. In the pattern, there is instructions on how to make it a sling, but I'm just doing a typical crossbody because it's easier. And so I will have two one inch D-rings for the hardware. For the strap for the crossbody, I'm just gonna use webbing, keeping it simple. I'll use a, a gesso bar that unhooks. So I will just kind of keep that simple and do it that way. Add two swivel hooks to it one inch of course for my webbing and that will be for the strap and how to connect the strap i'm going to do two zippers we'll do the main zipper on the top and then i'll do a zipper also in the back i'm going to use this zipper tape i'm um, also for the zipper tape i'm going to use two zipper pulls for the top main and then i'm going to use this really cool zipper pull from it's from jen's fabrics again and i'll use that on the back as kind of a feature zipper so i won't put this on the top because on the back It'll kind of show up nicely. And the last thing is I will use a tag. I'm obsessed with these tags from Heartwood and Hyde. I've been using them on all my bags. I also use one on this bag too, but I just love them and they just, they just make me happy. On the inside of this bag, I decided I'm going to do two slip pockets. I want to keep it simple. I don't want to do a lot of work onto it. So I just cut out two pieces of mesh. I just kind of rough cut these pieces of mesh so they're not even, you can tell they're not even straight. I will just put a piece of that waterproof canvas along the top as a piece of binding. And then I'll just sew it on and trim around it. So we'll go through this whenever, um, whenever we get to that point. But very simple way to do a slip pocket without really any work at all to you. And you'll be able to see clearly what's inside, which I feel like is kind of important since this is a smaller pouch. You won't be having to dig your hands in there. You'll see what's in there as soon as you look down in the bag. So this is the materials that I'm going to be using. I'm going to take a minute and cut everything out, including binding. For the binding, I'll be using the waterproof canvas and I'll just cut it one inch wide. So I'm gonna take a minute to cut everything out and then I will come back and show you everything I have and how it's looking and then we'll get started and we'll be done with this in like no time. It's such a quick pattern. I have everything cut out in order to make this bag. Let's go over everything and just kind of talk about the pieces. For the top main zipper, I have my zipper tape. I did not measure this. I just took one of my zipper panels and I made sure it was a little bit longer on both sides. That's the main thing. I want a little bit of extra on both sides because I don't have my zipper pulls on yet. I like to put them on after I sew it. So by doing it this way, it's easier for me to put the pulls on. So I have two exterior zipper panels and then I have two interior zipper panels. I am not interfacing anything. A combination of those materials means I do not have to use anything for interfacing and I'm gonna have a very stable, firm, structured bag. So that is gonna be for that top zipper gusset. For the bottom, I have a piece of the vinyl cutout and a piece of the water resistant, waterproof, I don't know which one it is, um, canvas. So that is what I need for the gusset. For those little slip pockets inside, I just took the mesh. My mesh, it's almost like a window screen. It's very stiff and structured there. So I like using it better because there's no stretch on it. Using the regular mesh is just so, it just stretches a lot. I still use it, but I like this a lot better. I took a piece of that water resistant canvas and I just folded it around that raw edge. The edges on this are very sharp, so you would definitely want to use something, especially if you're giving this to a kid. It would just be uncomfortable putting your hand in there. So I just folded that over there and I'm just going to top stitch. I'll top stitch twice on this. I'll top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the top 
and an eighth of an inch away from that raw edge just to make sure everything's secure. You don't have to, it's just what I wanna do. These are both rough cut. You can tell they're very uneven. After I top stitch this, I'll put them directly on that base and sew around, then I'll trim them. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. So this is just a very lazy way to do it, but it works out fine. I cut out two zipper tabs for the zipper that's going to be on the back of the bag. I went ahead and put the zipper pull on there and I went back and forth as to where I'm going to place this zipper. I kind of didn't even know if I wanted to do a zipper, but I wanted to show you how it looks with the zipper, so I decided to go ahead. I didn't want to cut poor Mario in half, so I decided to get down a little bit lower, but I didn't want it too low because I do want to add a tag. I made a placement to where I think I'm going to put my tag. I think I'm going to put it right here. I don't know if you can see that shining through, but I think that's where I'm going to place my tag. So I didn't want the zipper to be down too low to where the tag was too low and it didn't look good. So it's, I'm trying to take my time more and figure things out like, okay, placement, placement of the zipper, placement of the tag to try to make everything look the best. So this is what I'll use to make that back. Because I'm doing a zipper, I do need to cut out two extra pieces to make that zipper. So instead of cutting out two lining, I need to cut out four lining. So here's the two lining pieces. Here is going to be the front of the bag, and then this is everything for the back of the bag. I want to show you just how much I have left after cutting all this out so you kind of know. First off, I have the black that's just going that was just around. I think it was on the top and the bottom or maybe the sides. I can't remember. But I have that. I can use this and I will keep this. I will not get rid of this. You might think, oh, that's scraps. No, it's not. This can be used for zipper tabs. This can be used for D-ring connectors, whatever. Do not throw this away. Keep this and just put it in your scrap bin so you can just reach it out and grab it whenever you want. As far as the coordinating prints, I have quite a bit of it left. There's just some little scrap pieces. But then I have the rest of this roll. Is that not crazy? I can easily make at least one, if not two more pouches. I can make a wallet. I could do a lot of different things with this. So I'm definitely keeping all of this and try to figure out what I want to do next with it. But I have lots of options. So definitely this rapport gives you a lot. You, you don't just get to make one project with it. You can make a lot of different things. So the first things I'm going to be working on with this pattern is I will be, oh, wait. I've got my D-rings here somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. I have my two D-rings. Now, I just chose the easy way, and I simply cut this vinyl one inch. I'm leaving the edges raw. I don't like a lot of bulk whenever I'm sewing on my D-rings. My machine can handle it, but as with a domestic machine, it's just not as fun to be worrying about like, oh, is my needle going to give me grief? Is my machine going to give me grief? Is it going to look good? So sometimes I'll just take the easy way out and I'm leaving these raw and I'm just going to sew them that way. So no folded edges here. So I do have that and I also went ahead and cut out the binding. I'm using waterproof canvas. It's just an easier way to do it. You just clip it around and sew around one time. So that's all the materials. So let's talk about the first things I'm going to do. First things I'll do is I will, let's see, I'll go ahead and top stitch right against that hardware and then I'm also going to base these close so that's something I'll do. For my mesh pockets for the inside I definitely will go ahead and top stitch both of the bindings on. This back part we got a couple steps to do here so I'm going to go ahead and get started working on that a little. I'm going to set my tag aside I'm not attaching it just yet. On the back of my zipper zipper tabs. The way I'm doing this is a little bit simpler. You can do how the pattern says. You can do it whatever you want. So I just went ahead and drew the line 3 eighths of an inch away. I'm going to have my zipper facing right sides up and this tab will be right sides up and I'm going to lay it down on there like that. But before I sew that, what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of glue and I use this Beacon 3-in-1. I love it. It just makes things easier in my life. I know a lot of people prefer double-sided tape. Do whatever you prefer. Put a rope double-sided tape here if you want. I just don't like to use it. So just a little teeny bit of glue. Not a lot at all. Flip that. Make sure I got it oriented the right way I do. And then I'll place that zipper right sides onto the wrong side of the vinyl. I'm just going to press a little bit to get that glue to stick. 
Maybe I'll put a clip or two just to hold it in place. The glue gets tacky really quick. So it dries within a few minutes, but it's tacky enough to hold that in place right away. Sometimes if I want, I'll just even let it sit for a little bit before I even put the zipper tape on there to get it hold. This is the way I have that right there. I'll give that just a few minutes to dry and then I'm just going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from that raw edge. And that'll be how I have that zipper attached. I'll go ahead and trim up the extra width because you see it's a little bit longer or a little bit wider, I should say, on both sides. And then it will be sewn into here. The reason why I'm doing that is because it will be easier for me to go around and have just this one layer of vinyl instead of having the zipper tape to go over also. Is it a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. You can definitely run your zipper tape from edge to edge. I'm just doing it this way. Do whatever you like, do whatever's easiest for you and whatever's better for your machine. I'm gonna add this separate zipper tab on the same way. I'm going to take this back piece. I have my line drawn from where I want to cut. And, and I know it's stressful. You're like, that back is so pretty. Why are you cutting it? I'm gonna add a zipper. I really went back and forth on this, but I think I'm gonna do it and that way you would just show you how to how it looks with the zipper on there but you could put the zipper in the middle you can put the zipper higher up you can choose the placement of it because this zipper lining is going to be it's going to be a full pocket so it doesn't really matter too much where I put it as long as I like the placement of it so what I'm doing now is I'm just clipping one of these lining pieces right to the exterior I'm matching up all the edges so that way I can cut them both at the same time and the clips are just gonna make sure that I don't have any shifting happening and they're the same size. I have that clipped right there. Let's go ahead and slowly cut on that line. This will give me two pieces for the back. I will attach the zipper in between there and then this will be one of the first things I do to go ahead and kinda get that worked out. So now we have what you would kind of understand as far as how we'll do the zipper. Once we get that other tab on there, we will fold that down and make a zipper sandwich and sew that as well. So let's go ahead and add my other tab first. Make sure I have it orientated the right way. So that way it can be drying and we can sew this up quickly. I'll also use that glue whenever I go to put my tag on the bag. I love to use just a little bit of glue to get the tag exactly where I want it so when I'm sewing it around I don't have to worry about it shifting also. So letting that dry, we'll go ahead and start sewing the other pieces and get started making the bag. I went ahead and sewed on the zipper tabs and I trimmed them down the width so they're even with the zipper. This will be one of the next things we work on so I want to keep this out. The D-ring connectors, I did go ahead and sew top stitch there at the top and then baste these but I don't need these right yet so I want to set these aside. I top stitched this um, binding onto the mesh and I went ahead and clipped it on each of the lining pieces. Now I just kind of rough cut around there because it was really bad and I knew it would be getting my way but what I'm going to do on these two pieces is I'm just just going to baste starting here at the top back stitch go all the way around following the curve of the lining to attach the mesh to the lining after I get it sewn on and everything then I'll trim it down and that will complete the two lining pieces so I'm going to do that next now I'm going to take this zipper and I'm going to use attach it to the back panel so we have our two exterior bottom pieces our two exterior top pieces 
I want my pull to be closing to the left so I want it to eventually look like this. So the first thing I need to do is make sure I have it centered so that I have an even amount of the zipper tab so showing on both sides. And then I'm just gonna flip it down. I'm gonna clip this in place and then I will add that lining piece onto it as well. I just wanna make sure I have everything looking really good. It looks pretty good. I might pull out a ruler before I actually start sewing it just to make for sure. But the zipper and the exterior will be right sides together. Then I will take that lining, that bottom lining piece, and I'm gonna place it right sides down so it is right sides together with the exterior. Add a few more clips there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sew this as close as I can to the zipper teeth. I don't want a lot of room there. So it'll probably end up, I don't think I can get quite three eighths of an inch away from this for the seam allowance. I think I'll be probably closer to a quarter of an inch. And so I will do that. I will lock in my stitches whenever I start and stop and go all the way across. Then I will flip these two pieces wrong sides together like we typically will do and top stitch underneath the zipper teeth. And then I'll trim down my edges. And that'll be these next steps we're working on to try to get everything situated and on the way. So I went ahead and trimmed up the tabs. I top stitched along the bottom of the zipper and I basted it around those raw edges. I still need to attach my tag. I'm going to wait and go ahead and attach the top. And then when I look at the entire thing, then that'll kind of help me figure out where I want to attach the tag. Now for me, I'm going to go through both layers. If you don't want to, whenever you attach your tag, you can leave this um, basic. But I just kind of actually wanted the extra layers to go through for a little bit more security. Now to add the top, oh, and I also trimmed down the edges on my slip pockets. These are good to go, so I'm gonna set these aside. Now for attaching the top, we have the two top pieces, exterior and lining. This is the way I want it to look at the end, the exterior portion. And so I'm just gonna flip it down, right sides together. Everything should match it perfectly because we just cut it. While you're sewing this, try to make sure you sew it with the same seam allowance that you sewed the bottom, just so it looks good and consistent. And you will have to move your zipper pull whenever you're sewing. Just make sure you do that with your needle down. I'm trying to be really careful to make sure I line those edges up. It's not a big deal because it'll catch it in the seam allowance at the end, but I just like to be cautious. So top and the bottom are right sides together, flip it over. Let's go ahead and do that same thing with this lining piece, right sides together. We match up that straight edge, the curve is at the bottom. So we're gonna sew this. We're also gonna get started with a couple other things. I wanna go ahead and start getting everything taken care of. I'm gonna pull out that exterior front. I'm not doing anything to this. I'm just kinda of letting it stand on its own. I thought about adding a tag here, but I really didn't want to. So I'm gonna take one of my lining pieces and go ahead and place them wrong sides together, clip all the way around, and I'm gonna base these two in place. Another thing I'll do is I will grab out my zipper tape and the gusset pieces. Now we have two exterior, two lining. I'm gonna work with one exterior and one lining piece, set the others aside. If you are uncomfortable, you can baste the lining on first and then attach 
your um, exterior, but I'm going to go ahead and do this all at once. So my zipper tape is right sides up. My lining is right sides up and I'm just laying them together like that. So it's actually the wrong side of the zipper against the right side of the lining. Let me go ahead and put some clips here and then I will just add that exterior right on top of this. My zipper goes, I will sew, sew it on upside down and this will actually be the back portion and then the front will do it the opposite way. We will flip that exterior so it is right sides together with the zipper tape and with the lining. Okay, so let's sew all of these pieces. Back stitch when you start and stop. Baste these two pieces together and make sure if you're Prince Directional that your exterior and the pocket are going the right way and then sew these together. So let's get started doing these steps. Oh, and when I get through with this, I will go ahead and flip it just like I did the bottom, wrong sides together and then sew and like all the way around and top stitch close to the zipper. so here is my front exterior here is the lining that's good to go here is the back and I love the way that pocket looks it really it's just so cute I really like that I'm glad that I did that so I still need to add my tag onto here and then I'm also after I add the tag I will have to add the lining for this piece and then I also need to add the other side of the zipper panel so I have those so these are my next steps Let's go ahead and grab out that tag. Lots of times with my tags, I will put kind of like a, a backing on it so it pops out even more, but this one, I feel like where it is kind of a bright color and my background's kind of dark, it pops on its own. So I'm not gonna add anything else on that one. I am gonna take a little bit of my glue. I have my mark made. I like the placement of that, so I'm good to keep that placement where I originally thought. I didn't wanna add it until I made sure I locked the placement with the zipper. And you can see I just add a little bit of glue, not too much. And I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to center and make sure it looks all good and perfect. I'm so in love with these tags from Heartwood and Hyde. They just, I feel like they make everything so much more fun. So I just add a little bit of glue. I usually don't even add as much as I did. I add a little bit more than I usually do on this one. Just got, just got carried away. So that is how I'll let that dry just a little bit and then I'm going to stitch all the way around. Now, this is the hardest part for me. What I do is I do pull my threads back. So I leave my tails very long. I'm gonna to switch to a white thread so that it you know, kind of hides in, blends in a little bit better. And I leave my tails on my machine very long. I don't back stitch and then I go forward. I then, whenever I get to the corner, what I do is whenever my needle, I stop, my machine automatically stops with the needle down. I use my wheel to get up my needle until it is just halfway up. So I don't want to see the hole where the thread goes in. That's too far. I just want to get it to go up a little bit. That completes that stitch right here in the corner. And then I can pivot and go down without getting that slanted stitch, I get a true finish stitch there. 
If you guys have any problems with that or any concerns on how I attach my tags and want to learn that better, let me know in the comments and I will do just a close-up video of that. I will just switch my camera angle to show those details. But that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around my tag. I'm going to add my other gusset pieces onto the zipper and then what I'll do is after I get my tag sewn on, I will take this lining piece and place it right sides down. That will be for when I right open the pocket, this zipper right here, I can see that lining. So that'll be that part. And then I'll have to add this one, my last remaining piece. I'll have to add it just like this so that it is completed. So these are the steps we're going to do next. I'm going to go ahead and get started with these and get everything taken care of so that we can move on and be almost done. So let's go over the pieces we have left. We have both sides of the front and back exteriors and linings. I absolutely adore this back. That is so pretty. I love everything about it. I went ahead and made the markings and I got this from my template piece. And this is not the center. This is where the seam is on the gusset. So just so you know, you can tell it's not centered. It's down lower. So I have those marked. I went ahead and put my zipper pulls on my gusset and I trimmed the zipper tape. Now I need to add the D-rings so that I can go ahead and add the bottom piece of the gusset and then we're just putting everything together. Now I do not like a long D-ring. I just, I like them short. So I'm going to have quite a bit of overhang on mine and that's because I didn't use the pattern measurements. I just cut mine. So follow the pattern measurements and everything and you'll be fine but I just kind of rough cut mine and put them on there but I'm going to center this d-ring right there in the middle of the zipper tape and then I'm going to baste these in place and then what I'll do is add the bottom part of the gusset Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our bottom exterior piece and I want mine to go like this because this is going to be the front of my gusset and so I want my direction going that way so I'm going to flip that so it's right sides together with the zipper gusset pieces. Put two clips there, flip it over so you're looking at your lining. Take your lining piece and paste, place it right sides together with your lining. 
clip that there to make sure you check the seam allowance this is a larger seam allowance and when you're sewing a gusset you have to make sure you use the proper seam allowance because the designer has tested the gusset with that seam allowance to make sure it fits properly there's nothing i hate more than when a gusset doesn't fit a bag and hers fits perfectly but you have to follow the measurements to get that perfect fit so let's go ahead and sew that in place. Make sure your D-ring is going down. Be careful that you don't hit it when you're sewing across it. And back and stop. Back stitch when you start and stop. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trim that down a little bit. Just because I had a big overhang, I am going to go ahead and flip these two pieces of my bottom gusset, wrong sides together. I'm going to pull kind of tight there so that I can go ahead and have them folded properly back. We don't want to mess that step up. We want the lining the exterior pulled tight so that we can get a proper top stitch across the top of these two. And just so you know, you did not have to trim your D-ring tab down. You could have left it long and put a rivet there if you wanted to, just so you know. Okay, so this is what I have now. I'm gonna take that exterior piece, bring it around, place it right sides together with the other exterior side. Place those two clips back in there. Flip it over. Take that bottom of the lining piece, bring it around. It'll be a little bit of a tight fit, but it works just fine so that it matches up right sides together with your lining. Do the same thing we just did. We're gonna flip this right sides out. And now not only am I gonna top stitch here, but I'm gonna baste all these pieces together. So what I do is I start basting on this side. This is the part we've already top stitched. So I'm gonna start basting here, go all the way down, top stitch across, and then go back up basting until I meet this other row of top stitching. I'm gonna make sure I'm keeping everything nice and tight. I don't want things to get loose or floppy or get folded underneath. And I'm just basting and top stitching an eighth of an inch away from the raw edges or the folded sewn edge on the where the two gussets meet. If you have any overhang, trim it on your gusset, but now your gusset should be one complete piece. It looks great. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna mark your centers on your gusset. So I push my two seams together, and then you can either clip, snip, or use a marking tool, whatever you wanna do. I prefer to just clip. So I'm gonna clip on the top and the bottom. Then I flip my entire gusset inside out. And I make sure I orientate it. I know which part I want to be my front. And so I'm going to take the front of the bag that I'm going to have and I'm going to start clipping them right sides together. Let me make sure I'm doing this. Yeah, that's perfect, perfect. So first thing I do is I first thing I do is I match up those center marks that I just made on the top and the bottom. And then I come to the seams. If you remember, that's the part that my templates give is the seam, not the center on the side, so I match up those seams. And then I start clipping all the way around. Remember, this is right sides together. 
I'm going to clip this all the way around and then what I'll do is if you feel uncomfortable sewing curves there's a couple options. You can choose to glue, staple, or hand baste however you want to a curve. If you feel comfortable you can just go ahead and sew it all the way around no big deal. I always baste the gusset in place first. That means I'm just going to do an eighth of an inch of weight an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Then when I come back with the binding, that's whenever I do the full seam allowance. If your gus is struggling a little bit to fit, just push down that bottom a little bit and we'll check it once before we start sewing to make sure everything looks good, but it usually is just fine. I'm just smoothing out any extra bulk. Now I'm going to peek and see how everything looks. Everything looks great. I'm going to start sewing at the bottom, like I said, an eighth of an inch away going slow. If you want to, if you're a little nervous, you can do whatever method you prefer, whether gluing, stapling, or hand basting, but I'm just going to start sewing. Everything looks good. I like it. I'm going to trim up the little bits of overhang I had. If it's over a fourth of an inch, I'm going to fix it. But if it's under a fourth, I just look at it to see how I feel about it. If it looks good and everything looks even and smooth, I go on with it. So now what you do, my camera's getting a little hot, so I'm going to try to show you how to add the waterproof canvas binding on one side and then I will do the exact same steps on the back to complete this bag. I cut my binding one inch. It's not as wide as I usually cut binding but that's because all I do is I take it and I just clip it around. I don't have to fold it or sew it twice. This is such an easy way to bind a bag. If you're in a time crunch or if you just don't feel like fooling with the extra steps, it just goes all the way around. Now at this point, since I just basted the first time, I'll make for sure that I do the full seam allowance whenever I'm sewing on the binding. So I'm going to clip this all the way around and then I'm going to sew all the way around just like I did whenever I was basting the two pieces together to attach the binding. I'm trying to hurry so my camera does not shut off again like it did the other day. I really need to get a different camera or try not to clip, film as many long clips in a row. But you just kind of get anxious and want to finish the bag instead of like waiting all day to sew the bag while the camera cools down. Since this is a non-fraying material, I don't have to worry about folding the end down. So whenever I come to the part where I first started with the binding, I'm just going to cut off my binding a little bit further to overlap the two. I'm not folding down any of the edges. It's just going to be a complete overlap. And there you go. So I'm going to sew this on, let my camera cool down, I'll sew on the back side the very same way and then I will come back on camera when it's time to turn the bag. So I have everything bound and sewn together. I'm so excited but nervous to turn this bag inside out. It's looking great whenever I was putting it together but now after I've done these last steps I'm like oh gosh please let it look good, let me have not messed anything up. So let's go ahead and turn it right side out.
everything looks great. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to have to push out my seams. So whenever I do that, and it's just where it's a bound bag. So I will train the vine on the way I want it to lay. So what I'll do is I'll push those seams out and just put a few clips in there. I don't even want to keep the clips in for long because it'll leave indentions in the vinyl and I definitely don't want to do that but I just want to kind of and you can even just finger press it and you can see it'll kind of try to shape immediately with the finger pressing but this is how you kind of shape the bag so I will probably have to do that and leave those clips in there a little bit just in those top seams is really where it's going maybe a little bit in the bottom on this side but you just kind of compress you can use clips or just your fingers but oh my gosh is this not adorable i love it so so much my bottom seam i can tell is a little thicker if you have those really big clips um even like or like rubbery on the bottom those would be really good to compress the seams like this but other than that it is absolutely adorable i love the way this looks i still need to make the handle or the strap i should say sorry because i want to use this as a crossbody but look at that this is so cute love it okay so i'm going to use webbing and i'm just going to make a generic strap i'm not going to do anything fancy so it'll be kind of quick and simple for sure just measuring my strap out. I like to make a very long strap because you never know if someone wants to wear it as a crossbody or if they want to wear it as a sling, how they want to wear it. Feed one in through. Go ahead and fold that raw edge under. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to do that. Add a clip right there. Go on the other side and do the same thing. Make sure you don't twist it. Feed it through. I'll go up and under. Sorry about that. Up, under. Fold that part through. Flip that. And so now what I'll have to do is I'll have to cut this so I can add my swivel hooks. I always like to cut this side to be the shorter side. I don't like it too long. And it doesn't really matter too much because it's going to be the same no matter what. So I'll just, I'm not even going to measure that. Just cut it. As long as it's long enough to get your swivel hook on there, you're fine. Pinch that down. Slip that swivel hook right in there. In that crease I should say do the same thing on the other side with the other swivel hook there you go I always make sure the ends are both going the same way so that it looks nice and neat now what I'll do is you can either sew across here I always sew two rows of stitches or you could just put a rivet there I'm gonna do that off camera it's kind of late and I am tired <laughs> so I'm going to do that later off camera you'll see the pictures of it completely finished once I do it but I love this pattern I love this bag this is the perfect pouch from fierce kitten studios this vinyl is from jen's fabrics as well as the zipper pull here on the back the tag is from heartwood and hide and this has made an amazing bag i love it so much it's so cute and fun i really want to keep this one for myself i think i say that every video but this is adorable I really like it so much and I just think it makes such a fun, fun little bag. So I want to thank the designer for letting me make this tutorial. I love pouches, you know, and this one is a great one. Let's look inside. Have the two slip pockets there. It's really good. I really like the way this looks. Plenty of room in here too. So, so even though it's a small pouch, super cute, has lots of room very useful and beneficial. I think it'd make a great bag for anybody. 
So thank you so much for watching another tutorial of mine and I hope you guys have the time to make something beautiful and create something wonderful in your sewing room. Let me know in the comments below what you've been working on and what you've been sewing. And thanks so much and I'll see you guys again soon.